advice being kind of the end all be all to our marketing and our sales goals, but also we bring on a kind of ecosystem player of the devices and services components and kind of understanding where devices fits in the big picture. So I think that's a, one key component to how we uh, define value propositions and go to market with devices that create demand essentially for our products. Um, for us, I think one of the contributions that we're bringing to the table to Microsoft is our focus on the consumer, which I've heard others even mention today. Um, Microsoft in the past, I don't think it's known for being extremely consumer centric in either their marketing or their relationship management. Um, and our, our customer focus, our consumer focus and customer focus, um, I think brings a certain element to the pie that I think was missing. So we're you know, looking at consumer journeys, bringing that whole touch point planning against the target audiences, and understanding the media plans and touch points that then ultimately influence that. Um, and we do that in a way that's, I guess, more modern marketing, if you will, which is more digital and mobile focused, as opposed to a previous Microsoft um, advertising, which is generally more TV, TV focused pretty heavily. Uh, we focus more on digital and influencers, building relationships within communities of people in authentic ways, not paid ways, so that we can cultivate those relationships over time. Very cool. Sounds like you're having a lot of fun. It's awesome. Oh, That's yeah, great. for sure. Uh, Jennifer, you've worked with a lot of brands, both in your role and Beckon and sort of in the past. Talk to us a little bit about the journey you've seen brands go through uh, as, they, as they seek to become sort of more agile and more data-driven marketers. Yeah, and you know, it's 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 not just the biggest brands in the world like like Microsoft or Gap or um, the huge companies that we tend to work with, but um, it's small companies as well. Um, you can wake up one morning and say, "We want to be so agile, we want to grow so fast, and be so data driven, and all of that kind of stuff." Um, that's not something you go do in a day. Um, the intention um, does need to be clear. Obviously, if you don't know where you're going, you're never going to get there. Um, but the, but the, the, the journey is, and that's why I'm excited um, that Jared's willing to talk about this, and very honestly about this journey, um, because usually you know, where a company begins and where they start um, is very, very far from where they need to be in order to actually be making real-time decisions. Um, very often we're you know, cutting and pasting data together from various places, and it's so time-consuming that we only do it once a year, maybe once a quarter, or something like that. Um, by definition, we're using data in that scenario to describe the past. We're not using data in a real-time way to make a real-time decision. So um, I like to compare it to um, you know, kind of mapping. Um, most of us are using Rand McNally knit maps to decide where our marketing goes next and where we should be spending our money next. Um, we need to move beyond Rand McNally to, you know, past the you know, map quests of the world, past even the um, real-time but not dynamic um, models of you know, a garment or something like that. I like to think that where we need to be heading is somewhere much closer to a ways for marketing. You know, we need real-time streams coming at us from many different um, sources in order to make decisions about, like, do we turn left, do we turn right, where do we go next? And um, that's what I'm, you know, that's, that's what I'm excited to see from a journey perspective and the direction that, that we're heading with our brands. So, map quest to ways for marketing. Mm -hmm. Ways for marketing? So, so, Gary, where are you in that journey? Have you built your ways? Yes. Yeah, so it's you know it's a constant shit. Obviously, it's evolving. It's always evolving. We live in a business. I don't know if you guys have heard it's called cell phones. It's pretty easy to <laughs> navigate that. We have a few. Yeah. Uh, so you know, dynamic, you know, real time, agile marketing is very important for us to understanding what competitors are doing, what we're doing, what effect it's having, and making adjustments on the fly. So obviously, uh, working with Jenny and, and some of our other partners like Kara and our teams, our agency teams, um, we've actually structured weekly uh, an organization basically with an IAT related scope, uh, uh, IAT, sorry, uh, integrated agency scope that actually looks at uh, real-time metrics on a weekly basis. This is more digital focused um, and optimizes against not just the properties but the channels and the, the weights in which we're putting media into channels to help optimize against um, our investment levels essentially against what our objectives are. And using data to challenge some of those long-held decisions. That's right. Decisions. Absolutely. So, what are what are what are examples of some of the some of the insights that you had, yeah. which you were surprised by, and so which weren't obvious? Sure. 
So yeah, so um, the journey kind of starts, I guess, with understanding what we're trying to achieve. And for us, it's, it's a digital space. It's really about uh, sales at the end of the day, which is its own sort of challenge of connecting our business to sales when you don't have an e-commerce platform or a way to actually execute that final sale. You're dealing with partners. But what we've done as a business and as a marketing organization is really taking a hard look at what we think is meaningful in terms of the KPIs that we're putting all dollars against in digital and marching against those. So we've defined what engagement looks like, which can be a series of activities that take place within a given environment, like a dot com or a social environment, where we it's not a one for one, like you click two, we're counting clicks and that's success. It's not like that at all. It's more like did you watch a video? Did you scroll down the pages? How many pages did you click through, into, and in and out of? And how we line up our KPIs to actually uh, pursue engagements as opposed to maybe more traditional click media uh, metrics. So we looked at uh, we're looking at HQEs, high quality engagements. Do more engagements, which is a similar thing outside of product devices. It's actually going into uh, different services like accessories and things. Like are they looking and investigating on those? Um, leads, obviously, which is kind of carrier clicks. Are they going out to carrier sites, taking a look at those? And then modern marketing uh, wouldn't be complete without shares as a target. Uh, how are we influencing in social realms and pushing content and sharing content? So we have goals and targets around that. So this is super important because so often we see marketing teams want to track two things. One is how much they spend on marketing and then whether or not people buy phones. And like, darn, I wish that when I do one, the other one goes up. But what happens if you do one and the other one doesn't go up? And it's almost like, you know, we don't have leading indicators or an early warning system or diagnostics along that path. And if you think about it, you know, if you run e-com, nobody would just track traffic to site and total sales. It would be traffic to sites, how many people are getting to the next page, how many people are initiating cards, how much are they put. Like, there's all of these indicators that if something breaks, or if you want something to go up, there's many things along that step that you that, that you can optimize. And you know, looking for the leading indicators of sales in the early warning system is super important for every business, and everyone can and should do it. Now, I think there are some uh, long-held assumptions that might go into that about what actually drives sales that, that need to be challenged. Sure. This is another learning. Okay. And, and tell me a little bit, Jared, about some of the pitfalls and challenges. Yeah, some of the assumptions you had overcome. Sure. Some of the challenges you faced in, in making this uh, transformation. Yeah. So, so you know, in pursuit of digital, which is all measurable, and everyone gets excited about it because it's measurable. Um, we've spent a lot of time. Our agencies has spent a lot of time uh, with our kind of digital marketing team working through how to optimize against these four KPIs that I mentioned. Um, bringing costs down, driving as much engagement as possible, and then we've got really smart guys in the background that are doing correlation and multivariate analysis, looking at attribution essentially, and basically putting uh, HQEs and engagement metrics very high on the attribution against sales. Now, we, with that again, and a lot of the detail information that we're actually pulling together into a single source looks at funnel brand metrics, as well as digital metrics, as well as ad spends metrics versus competition, and then sales and activation data. We're able to see single views against a myriad of different slices of that data to really kind of break that HQE thing apart and make sure that we are going in heads up. Um, part of the driver, I think, it was a compete study that we recently did. Um, everyone gets excited about kind of controlled environments and how we can optimize our controlled environment on our .com and all of our paid media kind of points to that dot com that we optimize against for these four targets. Um, but the compete study actually realized that there's a lot of media going on and performance display and other things that are going on digitally that are actually never landing on our dot com but actually driving traffic towards carrier websites and third party review sites as well. So some of the data that we've actually been able to realize um, and initiatives that we actually put in place is driving a fifth metric now around third parties and how we're uh, basically creating HQEs and lead scenarios for review sites as well. So it's kind of early stages on that, but we do have a, we are lining up for a fifth metric now, uh, looking at review sites, which are equally, as if not more important, than our dot-com environments that we control today. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah. And what are some of the organizational challenges you faced, both internally within sort of the, the Nokia team sure. and Microsoft, 
uh, as well as with your agencies? How have, how have they reacted uh, to this journey? Yeah, I mean, the agency made, has, has been great. I mean, just, I think the only... Yeah, that's a first. <laughs> Someone setting a stage and seeing agents would be great. Yeah, no, they, they've been great, and our team's been great. Obviously, we, we live in dynamic times, and, you know, there's a lot of ambiguity going on, right? So for everyone to stay focused on things and get things set up, stay aligned in the right direction, and continue to march on, I think is fantastic. Um, you know, connecting all of this to a, to a sales framework, and we're, if there's a lot of marketers in here, I, I imagine, and sales, although it says sales and marketing, sometimes it doesn't feel like that, you know? Sales is always pushing marketing for accountability, um, and when you don't have that final click to on the buy now, you have a lot of, ex you have a lot of explaining to do, right? So we have to really get smart about how we're doing our attribution, and then ex articulating, explaining exactly what values we feel we're putting on various uh, channels, if you will, and then optimizing for that both in lower funnel and then upper funnel and everything in the middle as well. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Jenny, you, you work with a lot of brands, and, and we've talked about a great you know, success story here in sort of, uh, with Jared, but have you, have you seen examples of brands that are in trouble uh, and that fail along this journey, and how do you, how do you know that they're in trouble? Gosh, yeah. There's many leading indicators of, uh, you know, not, not, not us, for right. success. No, okay. you guys are well beyond the, the early stages, for sure. Um, I, we, we sometimes like to joke, um, and, and, and really it's not a joke. Um, most brands have someone who's in charge of, they actually call their analysis hindsighting. Um, so they literally call it hindsighting. Um, if your analyst or key super smart people that you bring into the team is on the verge of quitting because they are so sick of cutting and pasting and like pounding and basically, you know, your head of intelligence, marketing intelligence, um, actually is more like the head of plumbing or cutting and pasting, the chief of cut and paste. Um, you're chief in trouble. Chief of cut and paste. Chief of cut and paste, yeah, that's a problem. Um, other types of things that are like absolute, we see it all the time, which is, you know, you pull all these numbers together, and usually, Jared, this might be a little too close to the bone, it takes so much time to pull that data together that there's no time to actually have a thought or an insight about it. And so you see like key takeaways, you know, X is up 10%, like your results on the math as your like big insight and key takeaway. And we're just spending as an organization. There's smart people in our companies and our brands but it's all spent around the kind of plumbing of pulling these numbers together and less around the so what, the insights and takeaways and lessons learned. So, you know, I think that's been, um, those are all indicators that if any of those things ring a little too close to home, um, they're, they're, there's, you need help. Are, are there examples that, Jenny, you've come across of brands that were in that situation? You know, if there's one that's, that's another success story, in addition to the, to the Nokia Microsoft success story, you know, that think you'd like to talk about? Yeah, I mean, it's, the, the reality is that, you know, Jared is on his journey finding out as he does X, what's happening with Y, and there's long held, you know, old assumptions that all these things drive sales. Well, lo and behold, there's really two or three things that actually drive sales, and the rest of this, oh my God, we're putting, we're spending money on this stuff that hasn't actually been moving the needle. I think that happens all the time. Um, Converse, which is um, part of Nike, a client of ours, you know, who knew? They didn't know that as they were running TV and above the line in a market, that actually the open rates of the emails that they were sending in that market were higher, that the yeah. click rate of the banner ads are higher. Like, nobody has ever been able to connect those dots before and flow above the line all the way through to a sale. So yeah, and that's the, that's the danger that we see as well, is that everybody, when it looks like it's working and you're optimizing, you know, everyone wants to go all in on that one kind of tactic, if you will. Right. But the reality yeah. is, yeah, without the attribution, there's other influencing ATL influencers, maybe there's price offers in market that are actually driving lift and it's not really digital. So we, it's, we gotta be careful on how we attribute all that activity that's happening in modern marketing channels like digital and mobile, um, as opposed to the other influence factors that might be also contributing to that in either unpaid or paid fashions. That's very helpful, thank you. So Jerry, one last question before we wrap up. We have a bunch of marketeers in the audience and a bunch of people trying to sell technology to marketeers. Uh, do you have uh, words of wisdom or advice for either or both? We didn't prepare this question. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, Nimble, agile, come on. Yeah, I mean, uh, helping us have 
conversation, basically sales. For us, it's all about how are we going to drive sales and how do we declutter a complicated world of data and get to meaningful insights that are actionable. I think every marketer is going to be open to suggestions and ideas around that. Um, but how you present all the different options available, I think, is a challenge. So um, make it simple, make it the insight clear, and come with case studies. That's what I would say. So I guess that's easy. Meaningful insights and get simple. Boom. So with that, thank you. Thank you, Jared, and thank you, Jenny. Thank Thanks, you. guys.